Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and as you can see by the smaller canvas, we're going to do an acrylic painting today. Probably a, a close-up ocean wave should be a lot of fun. Now, as I said last time, these acrylic paintings are not replacing the oil at all. I'm just trying to kind of give you more ideas about how you can kind of use different mediums, but the same style of painting. All right, let's get started. Now, as you can see, I've tinted the canvas with, I don't know, a whole bunch of colors, some blue, some pink. Anyway, doesn't matter. As you can see, I did it very quickly. Now here's, I've got my paints, I've got my throwaway palette. I'm gonna mist the paints and mist the canvas. Now I wanna try something real quick, which I think might be fun. We're gonna do a very small sky. So I wanna see if I can get that thing blended out kinda all in one go. I've got my, my little blender. There, this brush is kinda, that's kinda soft, not super soft. You can't have a really soft brush. Otherwise it doesn't, you know, move the paint around enough. Sort of semi-soft. <laughs> There, and I'm just gonna brush this right around. So I'm gonna coat just the, the sky area with this white. Then you reach for your mister, give it a quick mist. When you mist wet paint, just so you know, when you mist wet paint, you come back, paint over it again like that, just to work the water in. Otherwise, little weird spots can happen. They don't always happen, but you know, most of the time they seem to. So, so there you go. It's worth mentioning that this tinted canvas is dry. Let me grab a little blue and let me just kind of show you what I mean. Take a little blue, maybe touch a black. And I just want to, there we go, blend it while it's wet. And maybe do half the sky and then come back and do the next half of the sky. It's not very big, so. And that gives you a very oil paint looking sky with the blend. One thing about acrylics, they can look harsh. So do everything you, you can in order to make them look like an airbrushed oil painting. Now, as you can see, I did a basic sketch, really just waiting for the sky to dry. Now, although it feels dry to the touch, I don't actually think it is. With acrylics, they, they kind of will skin over and give you the impression that they're dry. And I, I noticed this from last time. And when you go to scrub over them, you find out they're not dry. So give it a few extra minutes and it really doesn't take more than just a few extra minutes. So, you know, be patient. It's time well spent. Just go go do something else <laughs> there i like it i'm just underpainting. this is all easy stuff see my palette here just got so you see look at the little bits of paint that i squirt out now in oils we squirt out little bits of paint because i don't want to use much in these acrylics they tend to just dry on the palette so it'd be a big waste of paint which i'm not interested in doing and i'm sure you're not either now if you're interested in in painting a wave like this and you want to use oils instead we've got a nice long full length two disc premium DVD on this available at the website. In fact, we've reorganized the entire DVD area on the website. So it's a lot easier to kind of figure out what you want. It's, you know, just a lot, a lot more organized. Sophie's been working hard on that. So go check it out. And, and if you like it, let us know. There's a, a little contact form. Tell Sophie she did, did a good job. Now let's go ahead and roll in the eye of the wave here. It's just like any other painting. There. Well, okay, it's not quite just like it because it's, it is acrylic, so things are a little different, but <laughs> the idea is the same. The colors are the same. Actually, the colors are, the paint itself is really important because if you have a paint that shifts color when it dries, it's gonna frustrate you, so you want one that doesn't. There we go. Nice, I like that. It's starting to kind of come together. I'm putting in a little more eye of the wave than I actually want the finished product because while it's still wet, I can come back here and I can sort of eat some of it up with these darker colors, which we have here on the palette. See how that works? There, see, while it's wet. So you got about three minutes here to do this, depending on where you live. I probably have two minutes. <laughs> there. Yeah, a little dark right in there might look, look nice. Nice and tall, big wave. Alrighty, that's how it works. We'll come back and add more later. More probably the darks and you know, extra detail stuff, but this is starting to look good. Not too much of the green. I'd actually like to see a little more blue in this. There. Now that we're sure that our sky is dry, we can really get in here and dry brush blend. You can start kind of using maybe a synthetic brush if you want to get some cleaner edges, but I don't really care about using that right now. I don't care about the cleaner edges. I just want this to be laid in there very softly. There, see that? Now, because the background here is fully dry, 
This is a dry brush blending technique where the paint in your brush is actually wet, but oh well, it's just what it's called. There. That, that looks good. Nice. So see, just roll it. It's a small sky area, so I'm gonna just be patient and kind of do this. I don't really want to go crazy, but maybe I'll change the color. You see my color, I don't need much paint for this. You know, maybe get a little of that coming down here. There are good negative spaces, that's always important. Kind of do a couple of, you know, clouds that float maybe a little lower. There. Good, that looks nice. We just sort of keep this up, maybe, maybe, oh yeah, let's go a little darker, so. Let me show you kind of how that works. Just grab a little gray and maybe a little blue and red. And right here on the back side, let's roll this in to maybe get a little bit of a darker cloud action. Maybe a little more blue. I don't want this to go too much to the purple side. Yes, that's it, that's it. And just dry brush blend that right into whatever you got down already. Actually, this right here would be amazing. It would be amazing right up against Hope that's not too dark. I don't think it is. I think it'll be really good right against the wave for contrast. Maybe I'll make a cloud right here. There. Next, I'll load up our little filbert brush here, our custom filbert brush. See that thing? <laughs> Look at that. I'll load it up with just a little bit of white. Actually, it's kind of tinted white. But anyway, I'm going to use the sloping edge or the filbert edge kind of on the right as I lead in to highlight the top of this wave. Now, okay, because we we're kind of doing a stormy sky. We can imagine that maybe the sun is just coming right across and hitting the top, but because we're doing a stormy sky, I really don't want to go crazy and highlight the whole thing. I think it would be way dr more dramatic to, to reduce the light as we go away. There. Oh yeah. I like this brush because it's got, look at that, it's got a straight edge on the other. I won't use it now because I don't want a straight edge, but you can cut in nice straight lines and you can flip it around and use the filbert kind of as a blender as we normally do with the filbert you know how we scrub except for this is synthetic so it holds its edge it's nice and snappy and tight oh yeah the bristles stay tightly together so you get a lot of control with this brush all right then i'm going to rinse it i got my water there remember you dip your brushes and lay them down on your table once you're done with them you don't just leave them there like oil paints because they will dry out in no time. There, good. That, now before we get too far, it's looking good, but I'll use kind of the, the filbert in to, to soften a little more. Love it. Now, let me set that brush down, go back to my little stiff brush. And with my stiff brush, what I'll do is I'll just slide right under here with a little more shading and basically just the same color, but it's wet. That, that's the difference. Good. And I'll try to make this as misty and foggy as possible here. Now I'm back to my custom little angle filbert brush. And I'm going to slice in some lines here. One thing this brush does really well when you thin it down, almost like a liner brush, is it cuts some lines in that are just incredible. There we go. Can I work, maybe work a little more blue into that because you can't allow it to mix. You can't rely on rely on it mixing. It just doesn't happen, obviously. So, actually, speaking of mixing, what if, watch this. So for the most part, this is dry. I think maybe that's a little wet. I just did it. But let's just do this and see if that helps us. See if that helps us slide. I think what it'll do is, yep, it'll help kind of diffuse the edges of the paint, kind of like, you know, an oil painting would look. You're kind of a little bit fuzzy. You know how how it works. People fight that all day long. They're like, my painting's muddy and, and it looks soft. And well, with the acrylics, it's the other way around. I'm sitting here thinking, my painting looks hard. How do we fix it? How do we make it soft? So this is kind of one thing that'll help you spray your canvas and the paint will kind of run a little bit and that'll help to, to kind of give you some softer edges. But look at that filbert brush. See, big, big sweeping strokes on one side. Watch this, you flip it around. A little more water here. I've got a little jar of water. I was going to show it last time and I didn't. I got a little jar of water just kind of to dip in, wash brushes or whatever. But look, see, so you can turn it around and you can cut it in just like a little pointed brush. Isn't that amazing? Oh yeah, this thing's cool. 
Now I think I'm going to add a rock or two up here. I wasn't totally sure, but I think it'd be good. So let's go ahead and I've just loaded up here my little, my little flat brush. And this is a fairly small flat brush just because for acrylics, I, I like to paint a little smaller. If you saw last week's video, you'll note that <laughs> we can paint acrylics of all sizes. Just, I don't know, something fun about the small ones. There, at least for getting some details that, you know, are really effective. I, I like the smaller canvas, but hey, you guys do whatever you want. It's all good. It's all fun. So anyways, I'm throwing in these little rocks. See how I feathered the edges? See, just stroke the edges. This isn't oil paint, so you got to force them out of perspective. Let's see what else do we want. Maybe a rock there. Force those edges out so that you can easily feather over them later with the, the ocean color. That looks good. Maybe another small rock right there. That looks nice. Now, a little more blue in the color, a little white maybe, just to lighten it. Two or three shades. And I'm trying to decide where I want a rock here. Maybe, I don't know that I want one splashing right there, but maybe right here, yeah. Make kind of a larger boulder sticking out. Nothing too large. There, maybe, yeah, let that crash up against it. So there's our boulder. And let me reload here real quick. And let's think about a boulder even right here. It'll help to offset the eye of the wave, balance the painting out just a little better. Now I'm just finishing up placing a tiniest touch of highlight. You can see I'm just using the tip of my angled filbert brush. Again, kind of like a few brushes in one. I just think that works out pretty well. I dip that and then leave it on the counter there. You always want to dip your brushes. Now I'm going to grab my little micro filbert. I think I showed you this last time, but look at how tiny that little thing is. And it's a filbert. It's got rounded edges. So here we go. Let's place in our final, actually more water, our final highlight. Now again, if you guys want to do this painting, and you want full instruction, big, a big DVD, two disc one or download, we have it for oil paint. Or when it's similar, it's not the same painting, but boy, you could certainly use all the techniques to get you to this painting as well. All right, well, I think we're done. I hope you enjoyed seeing this simple little acrylic painting. Hopefully it gives you some inspiration. Next week, we'll be back to oils doing what we normally do. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.